And we are back. George Nori with you. Kim Dennis with us. We'll take calls with Kim. Kim, where do people get your 21-year-old book, What's Above? Um, you can go to my website at clairvoyantkim.com and just shoot me an email and I'll send you a book. Great. And you're pretty quick at uh, getting back to people who email you, aren't you? I am, yes. Yeah, I get on my, I get on my iPad and answer emails every day. So. What has been one of the saddest things you've had to do? Oh, I know. It's, it's as much as it's rewarding. It's very sad when I, you know, when parents come. You know, it's probably the saddest situation oh gosh, when they lose yes. children and stuff like that. It's it the is. Worst. It's the worst. It, it is. It's sort of the worst situation, but it's sort of also the most rewarding as well, too. You know, to. I mean, it's never easy to lose anybody, but when somebody's in their 80s or 90s and had a full life and whatever, we kind of get that. You know, nobody can be here forever. But when it's a young a young person who's only been here for a brief amount of time, you know, it's really, it can be really hard to wrap your head around it. So, like I said, it's the worst situation, but it also can be the most the most rewarding as well, too. I had a call today from St. Louis, a friend of mine who was a 27-year-old banker and had a great little business going for himself, died unexpectedly. Yeah, you know, five minutes from now isn't promised to anybody. It really isn't. It's five minutes from now isn't a promise to anybody. That's why I always say it's just like live for right now. Right now never ends. You know, focus on focus on right now. Yeah, but yeah, it can be really it can be really quite really quite shocking. But you know, he went when I believe, anyways, exactly when his soul was meant to go. It's not the right time for his loved ones and people around him, like yourself or whatever, to lose him for sure. But if somebody if somebody crosses over, we want it to be right for them. And I don't think you can be con- born, conceived, born, or cross over before it's the right time for your soul. doesn't mean it's the right time for you to lose that person. You ready for calls? I am. Let's go to Doc in Petaluma, California. Welcome to the program. Hi, Doc. Yeah, thanks for taking my call, George. Sure thing. Hello. Um, Kim, I need to know, and it's kind of kind of crucial this year, they closed the salmon season last year for California. Will there be a salmon season this year? Will there be a salmon season this year? Kim? Salmon season. Well, you, my first thought was yes, but it'll start later. I don't know if that helps. I believe yes, but it feels like it's a later start. When's it normally kick in, Doc? Well, normally it comes in around March or sometimes even April. It depends. There hasn't been that many fish go up rivers, so. They kind of okay. they kind of curtail the That could be why. I just I feel like it's there. I want to say June. I'm not the greatest in timelines, but I do feel like it will. But I just feel like it's going to be later. Will that still salvage the fishing season, Doc? Yeah, I love salmon. Yeah, it is that they had a closure the year before that a closure in the middle of the season, but they started a little bit late and they ended it at the regular time they ended it, but they closed it for July. But uh, that's what they're talking about is the shortened season. So that's what I'm hoping at least. Get a shot that's at what I get. Bit. June, July. Yeah. That's what I'm getting. June. It just feels like it does, but they just they open it later. Let's hope. <laughs> hey, Doc. Do what, what's like the biggest? That way. What's the biggest salmon you've pulled in? Mm-hmm. Uh, off the California coast, the biggest one I've ever gotten was about 38 pounds. Oh my goodness! Wow. How big is that? Uh, about four foot long. Wow! Wow! That's a fish. I love Thanks, salmon. Doc. I appreciate it. But so there's going to be a good salmon season, you think, Kim? Huh? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, I just feel like it's going to start later, and and I do feel like they're more abundant of fish that way. Maybe they just let them stock up or something. Yeah. Do people see their pets that have passed on? Yes, absolutely. All pets have a soul. We know that because they have personalities, and all dogs, all pets go to heaven. Want to hear a cute story? I had a lady about three weeks ago come to me specifically because she, her guinea pig had passed away. Her guinea pig? Her guinea pig. George, that was the first. Yes, and she wanted to connect with him, and the guinea pig did come through. It comes through in a different way. I'll see them. You know, um, they come through in a different way. They're a different type of soul, but absolutely um, all our animals do do cross over. And I, I believe animals get it way better than we do. That, you know, comes the time for us to cross over. I think that's why you hear about farm animals who, you know, will go off into the woods or something and cross over because they just know it's their time. And they're way more okay with it than we are. And just on that note, I don't. I think you only have control over one soul, your own, that's it. So if you have to put, um, turn somebody off life support or put a pet down, 
You didn't make that decision. You just helped with one that's already been made. And just because it's the right thing doesn't mean it's easy. No, not at all. Let's go to John in Wisconsin. Welcome. Hello, John. Hello, George. Hello, Kim. Hello. I have a quick comment and then a question for a reading, please. Kim, earlier you were talking to George about Stevie Wonder, his blindness, and whether he uh, dreamed in colors. I've been blind for four years, and whether I have a nightmare or a dream, colors are involved. And the other good news is, Kim, over the last year, my life has stabilized. I'm having less nightmares and a lot more dreams, and that's just a beautiful thing. Now, oh, here's that's lovely. Question. That's beautiful. Thanks for sharing that. Thank you, Kim. Now, here's my question uh, about a reading. Uh, Kim, my parents recently passed away. Uh, My wife, myself, my two dogs, and my cat three weeks ago moved from northern Wisconsin to my parents' home in Milwaukee area. We're very thankful to be here. Um, I'm blind and can't drive. My wife is disabled and can't drive. So we're kind of limited in how we can get around. But, Kim, I have a real heart to help people. Um, I have quite a story of my life, and I'm just wondering if you sense uh, if I could get a reading, please, because uh, I've never had a reading of any type from anybody, and I really like uh, your your tone and your your, oh, your opinions. I you. think, Kim, are you sensing I'm on a good track, or can you guide me on how a, a blind yeah. guy um, can get on helping other people to avoid the, um, setbacks I've had? You know, I'm probably sharing your story. It's funny. I hope this sounds right, but it's almost like you're putting a book together. I don't know if you've thought about that, but when you were talking about that and your life experiences and whatever, I feel like sharing it with others would help a lot of people who are in a similar situation as you. And that was my first thought was like getting somebody to help you put a book together. That's a great idea. That's a great idea. I, Kim. And yeah. I, I love, and I, love I feel that. like where there's one book, I feel like there's, there's going to be three. Three you know, books. I feel your mom around. She's giving you a pat on the head. Yeah. Thank You're you. You're a baby boy or something. I don't know. Big, warm, cozy feeling. But, yeah, I feel like writing a book and sharing your experience with others, especially people who are in a similar situation, I think would be wonderful. Comment, Kim, and I'll let you get on another callers. One of the biggest okay. chapters in my book will be Coast to Coast AM with George Norrie, Tommy Danheiser, and, and the crew. I discovered oh. Coast to Coast three years ago, and I have rarely missed a show, and it's brought me so much peace and joy and oh. harmony, and I've learned more. On the, those three years than I have in my 66 years on my life. So I want to thank yeah. George for having guests like you who help people like me, and I encourage you to keep up the good work. And, uh, George, thank you for taking my call. Thank you, Oh, aren't you lovely? Very nice. Now, remember that uh, person I told you about who was in a coma for two months? Yes. He's on the line. Oh, lovely. Let's go to Jeremy in North Dakota. Hello, Jeremy. See, I'm talking Hello, about you on the air talking. already. <laughs> I think you're clairvoyant. <laughs> Hi, Jeremy. Hello, Kim. Um, I have a question yeah. about a stock position I bought clear back in July of 2022. Okay. Will so you just wanted to know where the stock is going to go. Has it kind of been stagnant, not doing anything, not really going up or down? Mm. Um, it hasn't been. It's... Uh, Just kind of, I check its uh, forecast, and I just checked the forecast again a couple days ago, and it says that within the next year, it'll sell a little over $37 a share. And I have a uh, good till date order until uh, July of uh, 2024. I mean, you got like a million shares, don't you? Yep. Yeah. I have uh, over 43 million shares. 43 okay. million shares at $37 a share. Okay. And I have my order is to sell it at uh, $22.88. Sell it at Did a I... penny, you still make money. Yeah. Sorry. So you're wondering if you should sell it? So I'm just wondering what the question is. No, well, he's wondering well, if it's going to go up. I kind of I kind of see it being the same for a while. I don't I didn't see it dropping, but I didn't really see it going up and it it sort of felt like stagnant kind of staying the same. Is what it felt like to me. It feels like for maybe the better part of a year and a half ish. Well, he's waited or, this long, right? Right, and I feel or just over a year like even like a year and a quarter I'm I'm getting that. And then it feels like it feels like 
things start to change. It feels like going into going into next year. Kim, what would you say you specialize in if you had to pinpoint an area of expertise? Well, probably channeling loved ones. I think the mediumship part of what I do. You know, a psychic clairvoyant, clairvoyant's a, a French word, right? I mean, clear seeing and whatever. I just seeing a clear picture, I do that, give you insight into your life. I think that's sort of what the psychic part is. Um, and how to, how to guide your life and spiritually and stuff like that. And then there's the mediumship part. And that's really the heart of my work is connecting loved ones with their, like with your dad or with people who have crossed over to sort of give them, not sort of, but to give them proof, you know, like the chocolate thing, right? How would I know that unless Charity was around watching her parents, you know, the night before? Exactly. That's really the heart of my work. That I can see healing taking place there. First and I love calling. giving people direction and how to make a better life for themselves. You know, it's all about manifesting. I can't make anything happen in anybody's life except my own, but I can, I can offer them the tools um, and the insight to, to make, so that they can make the life that they really want for themselves. Let's go to first-time caller Sharon in Connecticut. Welcome to the show. Hello, Sharon. Hi, George. Hi, Sharon. Hi, Kim. Um, I was listening, and my question, and I've wondered about this for years, <laughs> um, with reincarnation. Sure. When I pass, I've lost, I um, feel like, above and beyond the normal of friends, family, and loved ones. But when I go, I want to see them. I don't want to be told, oh, well, you know, they were reincarnated, and now they're back down there, and they're Bob yeah. now. Or, yeah. yeah, that's a great question. You know what? It is. You know what? This is my spin. I believe, first of all, there's no sense of time on the other side. But I believe that it's about 80 to 100 life years before a soul reincarnates. I don't know that for sure. But from doing readings, I read for lots of lovely people well into their 80s, and their grandmothers come through that, that passed away when they were eight. So they've been gone for a long time. And I believe once a soul has taken on another life form that I can't communicate with them or channel, they've moved on. Moved on. So I, that's a really great question. A lot of people ask me that. Um, but I, I, my experience is that you reconnect with everybody who went before you. We have choice, no. though, Kim, don't we? Don't we have free will to decide? Oh, if we absolutely! Want to go or not? I think I think we do. I just think how it rolls is that they're, that souls aren't in a big hurry to cross over. And my experience is is that I've never that once they, once they've taken on the life form, I don't think I can channel them. But I've never had a problem picking up on somebody's mom or dad or grandma or whatever, even if they've been gone for like. 70 years or something like that. So as much as I don't think anybody's on their last life, I don't think they're in a big hurry to reincarnate. I've always wondered if someone reincarnates, if they're just literally gone, or if part of that soul yeah. stays behind to comment to people I like you. I don't believe so. I don't believe so. I think, I, I, I believe once you've taken on another life form or whatever, I don't, I don't. Unless it's something that happens through out-of-body experiences that, that we don't know about or think about or in our sleep or something. But I, I think once we've taken on another life form, I think you've moved on, and I don't believe that they're communicating with me. Let's go to Oregon. Sakura's with us on the wild card line. Hi, Sakura. Hi, George. Hi, Kim. How are you? Hi. Great. Great name. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, my question is I see the number 10 a lot. Um, when I pick up the phone, it's 110. And it's random. I'm not looking for the number 10. It would be 1110. Is there a significant to the number and why sure. it's attached to me? Or? Sure. Uh, not so much the number, but your experience of seeing it all the time. Law of attraction. So what it is, is that's, it, it works for everything. So if you see a number a couple times, you're like, gee, you know, and then you make a declaration. Every time I look at the clock, I see the number 10 or the number 10 in it. The universe goes, Done. So every time those numbers are around on your phone or, or on a clock or whatever, you're going to be drawn to see them. There you go again. Gee, every time I look at the clock, it's 10, 10. Okay, done. And so every time those numbers are around you, you're going to be drawn to see them. That's law of attraction. Start saying million dollars. As long as we don't see the numbers 666, six, six, right? Correct. I, you know what, though, George? Funny you say that. I saw that on, the, on somebody's license plate yesterday. No way. Like, I did. It wasn't the only numbers. He had, like, letters and stuff. And then, yes. Do you think I'm that like, person I, I was picked... wondering, did you choose that or did you randomly get that? Either way, I'd be like, yeah, I'd like a different license plate. Funny you should mention that. 
you yeah. think they picked that number or they I got it randomly? Know. I don't know. I, I don't know. But I was like, wow, it was right in front of me. Right. And I was like, wow, it was like three letters of the alphabet and then 666. I'd sell that car just to get rid of the license. I plate. know. I know. I don't believe in luck or anything good or bad luck, but I'm like, yeah, I would, yeah, I'm like, I would pass on that. Huh. Let's go to Hugo in Illinois, east of the Rockies. Hugo, welcome to the show. Hey, hello. How are you guys doing, Kim? Hi, Great. George. Hi, Hugo. Great. Hugo, nice to hear from you. Nice to hear from you. So, my, try to make a long story, make it short. So, my father and I didn't have a relationship. I didn't talk to him for maybe 30 years. And right before he passed away, I had a this urge to see him and um, forgive him. So I forgave him. He forgave me. It was a wonderful, uh, um, wonderful day. But when I left, I left him with his second family. And I felt something in my heart saying that he was going to pass away soon. I told my wife, he's going to pass away soon. And then 30 days later, he passed away. Oh, my gosh. So this was maybe like four years ago. And... Um, I'm also in the military, and I was able to go to San Diego, and I met up with my family. And one of my cousins who communicates with the side of the family told me that when he was passing away, his second family was basically treating him like garbage, was treating him like a dog, was giving him his medication, was stealing from him, was making him sleep outside, oh, uh, cool. put the catheter in mistake, they put it in his mouth that my cousin was upset. They mm. just oh, basically, geez. yeah, so basically this family that he left um, us for was treating him like garbage. And um, I felt, even right now talking about it, I feel sad even though we didn't have a relationship, we forgave each other. Um, he forgave me and I forgave him. Um, I feel bad and I feel sad that um, it's in my heart and um, right before I left, my cousin was telling me that <laughs> that um, he's haunting them because mm -hmm. after he passed away, they could see him in the hallway and he slammed on the door and knocking on the door because basically there was time that they would lock him out and wouldn't he, let him He wanted the house. to get even, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah, so... I think you're, he's. Yeah, I mean, he probably didn't. I, it sounds like he didn't do anything to hurt anybody. He's he probably scares them, catches them off guard. He's letting them know that he's around. Seeing them isn't really a haunting. It's just he's showing himself. You know, um, yeah, he could be a restless spirit, probably to do with with how they treated him, I guess. But they forgive everybody. Like, he forgives them, right? He does. Every, I mean, that's how beautiful heaven is. You know, you don't hold grudges or anything like that. Do they try to so, get even, though, Kim? I don't believe so. I don't think in heaven that that's... No, they kind of have a different perspective. They know we're down here doing the best job with what we can, with who we are, with what we come here to learn. They have that perspective. So my experience is nobody's out for revenge or anything like that. He's letting his presence be known, but he's not haunting them. It may scare them, but I don't think that that's his intention. But I want to say one of the beautiful things you did was forgive him. Forgiveness is self-love. You did it for you. It helped your dad but you do it for you. Yeah, it makes you feel better. Me, what somebody did was okay, or you even have to have them in your life. It's just you're letting yourself off the hook. Kim, we're going to take a short break and come back and take final calls with you in just a moment here on Coast to Coast. She's also got a presence on Facebook. Just look for a clairvoyant Kim on Facebook. And welcome back to our final segment with Kim Dennis. Kim, what would you say of everything that you've studied on the other side might be the most perplexing, baffling thing about the other side? I don't know. Oh, that's a really wonderful question. Um, yeah, you know, I don't, that's, I don't really know. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not that confused. There's lots of things I don't know or don't understand, but I'm kind of okay with it as well, too, because I kind of get that most of the stuff is a mystery. I just kind of more feel blessed and grateful that I've been giving a little bit more I have to, I don't, that I know a little bit more than the average person about what goes on when we cross over and that, that we really do, that we really do survive this. I don't know why babies make all the effort to come here and then cross over. I know, I understand that that's all their soul needed this time around, but I'm really, that's it. That's all. So it kind of, it kind of boggles mind if you make all the effort to come here, you know, and you're here for a couple of months and go back up. I'm like, really, that's all your soul needed. But I guess that, that is true. 
Like the movie It's a Wonderful Life, have you ever weighed what life would be like had you not entered it? I don't know. I don't really I don't really think about a whole lot about what what ifs or whatever. I just yeah, I just know that I came here. I came here for a reason. I know nobody's here by by accident. You know, and um, I just feel repressed that I have an extra gift that I can share with other people. So, All right, let's yeah. go back to the calls. Elizabeth's with us in Niagara Falls on the Canadian side. Welcome to the program. Hey. Hi, Liz. Fellow Canadian. Hi, George. Thank you so much for taking my call. These shows mean so much. And hi, Kim. Um, hi, my hello. husband passed away about a month ago. Oh, I'm so very sorry. Oh, Are I'm you so picking sorry. up anything from him? Yeah, have you dreamt about him or had a visit? Hmm. Yeah, he just says he comes really close at night, as they often do, and I just feel like they're not as common as people think, but I feel, and they're not dreams, they're visits when you sleep. And I feel like he has a couple times. You know, I see an older gentleman with him as well, too, so I think his father's probably crossed over. Crossed over, and there's another man there with him as well that he, you reconnect with everyone, but these are the ones that are coming up. So I almost feel like maybe he lost a brother as well, too. So he just wants to reassure you. Um, nobody's sick on the other side, and that he's reconnected, reconnected with his family. You know, he's showing me an airplane. Are you going on a holiday or are you going on a vacation or something? I feel like you're getting on a plane before too long. So, and if you are going on holiday or vacation, he just said that he's going with you. Okay. Okay? Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much. Sorry for your loss. I thought maybe she was going to say he was a pilot or something like that. I don't know. She didn't say much, but yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I just, I saw or the Air Force. I don't know, I just saw planes around them. When you see these other spirits around the mm-hmm. entity I, she's been asking about, mm-hmm. are they all related in terms of life? What do you mean, like? I mean, were they, like you said, the father, maybe the grandfather? Are they all Yeah, they were all similar? connected in life, yes. What about friends? Oh, sure. Absolutely. I mean, we, I mean, yes, the obvious ones you reconnect with parents, you know, siblings, and even the not so, not so um, ones that you might expect, like maybe you had a wonderful teacher or a neighbor, you know, or like Mrs. Lukey, my clean, the the little woman I cleaned for, you know, anybody, anybody, anybody that you've connected with will, will show up. Anybody can show up and to be there when you, when you return back home to the other side, it's like a big welcoming party. I mean, you're you're leaving people here, but you're 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 going to a big reunion on the other side. Well, right now we're so, going to Pico Rivera, California, where Charlene is with us. Hi, Charlene. Welcome to the program. Hi, George. How are you tonight? All is great. Thanks. Good. Why, well, hello there, Kim. Hello. Hello. What can I help you with this evening? This well, um, my one of my dearest. And closest and best friend of 29 years. Um, last month, we had a misunderstanding, a miscommunication. Oh. And she hung up on me and hasn't talked to me since. And I was just wondering if she'll call me back, if we'll rekindle our friendship, or she'll rekindle it with me. I how long that'll take so, for her to call me back. Yeah. <laughs> I would let her reach out to you. That's the first thing yeah. that comes. I do feel like she will at some point. At some point, I have a, I, I'm getting a, a sense that whatever this was, it was something bigger that she's been harboring and hasn't talked to you about, which she should have. Uh, good friends or adults are going to sit down if they have a problem, look each other in the eye, and they talk about it. So I get a feeling this is about something else, something else, but I would let her sit with it for a while. I wouldn't reach out, and I have a feeling um, within a few months, it feels like she's reaching out to you. And when that happens... You guys can't sweep it under the carpet. You need to talk about what happened, because if you don't, it will happen again. you got to clear the air, don't you? You do. Yeah, so you can't just let it pass. No, talk about it, then let go of it. But that part has to happen. If not, this will resurface again. How long can you let things like that fester? Well, I would. I, that's up to you. I mean, I would just let it go. It's just like that's that's where the control she has. It's just like you got to forgive everybody who's wronged you. You don't have to take abuse or anything from them that's not what i'm saying but you want to forgive her let her go let it go and forgiveness is something you do for yourself so that you're not upset and angry and i get it because you've been friends for a long time but something's really off here for her to react that way after a friendship for this long i think it's about something else 
And I think it has something to do with jealousy. Much deeper, isn't it? Yes, yes. So if she, if I'm right that she comes back in, you have to deal with it in the moment, deal with what happens, resolve it, and either continue to be friends or let her go. Now, you just said something interesting, if you're right. What's your percent of you being right? Yeah, I, yeah, I always try to be humble. I'm pretty, I'm pretty accurate. I'm pretty accurate, but I try to be humble as well, too. Nothing's 100%. All right, good luck. Let's go next to Joe in Beverly Hills, California, west of the Rockies. Hey, Joe. Good morning, Hi, Joe. George and Kim. Good morning. I'm thrilled, thrilled that I'm at Coast to Coast Insider since you first started that program. Oh, thank you for being part of that. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I love it. And I would like to please ask two quick questions. One is about a family member, and one is about a family somebody who used to be a family member. Okay. Okay, go ahead. All right. The first one is I say prayer every night before I go to sleep that someone in my family comes and visits me in my dreams because I dream a lot and I remember my dreams when I wake up. Okay. I had a dream last night about really delightful, sweetest dream about being back in the house that I grew up in, in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and my parents were there and my older brother was there and I helped asked him for help with my college math homework and he said he'd help me the next day and in the dream I he comes over to me I give him a kiss on the cheek and he gives me a kiss on the cheek back Mm -hmm. and that was my dream and when I woke up this morning I thanked them for coming into my dream because it's so meaningful my brother passed away in 2020 2000 so 24 years ago, and an autopsy was never done, and my family never really spoke of it, and I was wondering if you have um, any inkling, Tim. He passed quickly, right? He passed quickly? He passed quickly? Um, It was hard to tell. He wasn't answering his phone for a day or two. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I feel like he passed quickly, so I feel like he was was here. Was he struggling with mental health at all? Mm. Yes. Yeah, I kind of think he took his own life, is what I'm feeling. I feel like it was really quick. He took his own life, and oh, I, that probably leads into why the family's not talking about it. If there's nothing that's to hide, always, you hide nothing. That's what I've always always believed. Yeah, yeah. you know, your gut's so, always right. Yeah, he said he you. took his own life. He took his own life. So. What yeah. else do you have, Joe? Second question is, um, about three weeks ago, I got a call from my first brother-in-law telling me that my first husband passed away. Oh. And I want to know if now, since he is no longer here, mm-hmm. and it's funny, I always, you talk about numbers, I always look at my clock or if I pause on a program, it always says 517, and we got married on May 17th. That's been happening to me on a weekly, daily basis for okay. 30 years. So- so as much as I said before, sometimes it's law of attraction, sometimes it means something. So if the numbers actually mean something like they do to you, then it is a sign from him. And it just takes you there. It's not a thinking thing. It just takes you there to him. So it's him working over time, as they do. I, my experience is when spirits first cross over, they work over time, giving us lots of indications that they're there because they're trying to help us through our grief, if you're grieving him, and give us signs that they're still, they're still with us. I start acknowledging him. Um, I mean, if you wanted to continue, fair enough. But if you, I would acknowledge him and say, okay, I know that that's you, and chances are that they'll probably stop. But he probably won't stop hanging around you and giving you messages that he's there with you. So, And sometimes it's their way of reconciliation as well, too, if he wasn't the greatest husband, right? It's his way. It's probably a good feeling to have him around to let you know that he is, that he is sorry and that he's close by. But um, but like I said, if the numbers mean something, absolutely. And if it takes you there and makes you think of them, then it is. Good kind advice. of nice that it's your wedding day of all good, of all days. But I would just acknowledge it, say that it's him if you want it to stop, and it probably will. Once they get confirmation that you get it or whatever, sometimes it can stop. Is that how you get rid of a pesty spirit? I think so, too. I think if you, yeah, sometimes there's random ones. I had one that used to be in my house when my kids were little. And they would almost think that they would hear me coming home, hear the front door open, hear the closet door open, coat hangers rattle. They come upstairs, and I'm not there. I heard her, I, and I felt like it was an older woman. I heard her once, and she, she, and I heard it, and she went past. I could see her going past 
my daughter's bedroom and I was brushing her hair, getting her ready for school. And my daughter looked at me and she goes, Ashley's here. And I'm like, no, she's not. That's my older daughter. And I went whipping into the other room and I said, I don't know what you want. And I know you don't mean any harm, but you're scaring my kids back off. And she did. I don't know. Maybe she didn't know she was coming in as close. I have no idea. But as soon as I did that, I, I was very kind, but I was firm. Never happened again. Next up, let's go to Rick in Massachusetts. Hello, Rick. Go ahead. Hey, how are you guys? guys? Great, buddy. Thank Hello. you. George, George and Kim. Um, I, well, I have a couple. I know it's a bit late, so I'll try to be quick. But um, um, I was the one, George knows I called, and I had a mold illness for a long time. But um, since I talked to you last, my three seven year old daughter passed away on January 24th uh, oh, suddenly. Um, and so there was, you know, we're dealing with that. With Stuff. Um, and I do have a public service now, and i got to say this quick because um, this is for all Coast to Coast listeners. Be very careful. I'm listening to what Jeremy said. Be very, very careful. There's a big scam going on where people are on Facebook or on YouTube, and they're trying to get people to buy stocks, and they tell them it's an insider thing, and they're going to make all this money. And end up... You there? Yeah. Oh. Be really careful. You're breaking up a little bit. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay, hold on. Let me let me put you here. Uh, is that better? I uh, oh, much better. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah, that was just a public service announcement. Announcement for all. Yeah, it's a good tip. You got to be careful out there. Be very, very well, careful. Yeah. Well, sorry about um, your and, daughter. You know what? What my first thought was is I feel like she's got a brother there with you. Did you lose a young boy or a baby boy? Um, or if your wife miscarried or something, but yes, or, my like, wife did. Yeah, my yeah. wife, uh, when we were first together, she did. Yeah. She had a um, like a small miscarriage. Miscarriage, yeah, that was a boy. So the oh, first wow. thing your daughter was telling me is that she has a brother up there. Brother up there, uh-huh. the whole comes in pretty much at conception, and I just see the two of them together, and I just see her holding his, holding his hand. So he comes in the form of a child. They're not children anymore, but she just says that she has a sibling up there as well, too. And oh, I also great. see her with, a, with a, quite an old lady. So probably a grandmother, but I don't know if there was one that was really quite elderly, like in her 90s or something. Um, yeah, there was just, um, Yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, I just see. So your daughter said she's fine. They always are. She said she reconnected with a brother, which was a really wonderful surprise. And I just see a really elderly grandmother there with her, with her arms around her. So, yeah, she passed quickly, you said. Is that right? Yeah. I don't know if she had long hair, but I see it pulled back in a ponytail. So, and anyway, she just said, just want you to know that she's that she's happy and in a safe place. You bring closure to a lot of people, Kim, don't you? Uh, I, I try to. I try to. Yeah, I try to. I try to narrow that gap, you know, to try and give them some closure, some peace. You know, that they don't feel the loss quite as much, quite as much. And I think, you know, a lot of healing can take place when that happens. Would you... If he's still listening, she's with him a lot in his car. Sorry. Oh, that's good. She Do travels you... with him a lot in his car. Would you consider yourself very spiritual? Oh, absolutely. I hope so. Oh, yes. Not religious at all. Um, it's just not for me, but oh, very spiritual. Um, I try to be. I try to be. I try to, um, I try to be a good person and help other people. Um, not every second of my life, but that's sort of my mantra. Because I think if you do that in a very basic form, you'll have a blessed life. You'll have a blessed life. Um, I'm very grateful, very grateful for this gift. Um, I don't know why it was given to me, I, but hey, I'm just, I couldn't be more happy for it. So, and I try to operate in a spiritual way. I try to think about always with empathy, what I can do for someone else. You know, if, if everybody just tries to do, or does one random act of kindness a day for somebody that has nothing in it for you, but to help someone else, your life will get better. Even if you have a good life, it'll just, it'll just improve. That's karma. And it, it is. It bang on. What goes around comes around. And it doesn't even have to involve money. Maybe you let somebody in front of you. Maybe you say, wow, I ever like your, your hair. You look good. Everything that you make people feel will come back to you. It may not come from that person, but it's coming at you. Absolutely. Kim, keep in touch with us. Kim Dennis, her website is linked up at coasttocoastam.com. For Dan Galanti, Tom Danheiser, Lisa Lyon, Lex Lonehood, Sean Lottesore, Stephanie Smith, Chris Burles, Tim Banal, George Knapp, and Richard Serrett, I'm George Norrie, somewhere out there on Coast to Coast AM. We'll see you on our next edition. Until then, be safe, everyone.